Hollywood just won't give up on their gender swaps. Disney Plus, the streaming service, has launched a reboot of the 1990s Doogie Howser MD series about a teenage genius who becomes a doctor, which originally starred Neil Patrick Harris, but the remake stars a 16-year-old girl, and her name is Doogie Kamala Aloha or something. So not only is she a girl, but for extra diversity, she's Asian. But there were concerns that this may perpetuate the Asians are smart stereotype. So instead of making her Chinese or Japanese, they made her Hawaiian, a Pacific Islander. I won't waste 30 seconds of my life watching the new Doogie Howser reboot, but I guarantee you that there will be cultural Marxist propaganda woven into almost every plot, because when Hollywood does a gender swap for a series, or a movie that's just the tip of the iceberg. Another new gender swap is He-Man, which was released on Netflix, directed by Kevin Smith. Oh, I'm sorry, Masters of the Universe. It's not called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. It's just called the Masters of the Universe, but it should have been called Tila the Lesbian because in the very first episode of the series, he-Man dies, and then for most of the entire rest of the season, the show focuses on Tila, which is voiced by Sarah Michelle Gellar, whose character looks like, uh, well, let's just say she probably has a crush on Evil Lynn. One of the first gender swaps, which consistently ruin every film franchise it's been attempted in, was The Next Karate Kid, back in 1994, starring Hilary Swank, who was taught karate by Mr. Miyagi. The film has a 7, 7% 7 <laughs> approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Then, 16 years later, they decided to remake it again in 2010, starring Will Smith's son Jaden, because the franchise needed more diversity, so The Karate Kid was made black. At least Cobra Kai redeemed the franchise, which is surprising. Surprisingly great. In 2016, with fourth wave of feminism striking America like a Category 5 hurricane, gender swap mania went supernova with the remake of Ghostbusters. But instead of starring Bill Murray in the gang, it featured four women as the Ghostbusters. At the very end of the movie, the girls shoot the giant evil ghost in the crotch with their proton packs to finally destroy him. And actress Leslie Jones, who was one of the Ghostbusters, quit Twitter and said that she cried because she was getting harassed by people who hated the film. It completely bombed at the box office. It cost the studio $125 million in losses. And a few years later, when it was announced that a new Ghostbusters was in the works and that would continue in the spirit, no pun intended, of the original series, the director, Jason Reitman, was called a sexist because that meant it wouldn't include the cast, which basically ruined the franchise, and it wouldn't be another feminist empowerment film. In Terminator Dark Fate, John Connor, the future leader of the resistance against the machines, is killed literally two minutes into the film, making all previous films completely pointless since the primary mission was to ensure sure that he lives so he can grow up to lead the war against the machines. Then Sarah Connor, along with the help of another good time-traveling Terminator, who is an enhanced cyborg woman, help another girl, a Mexican girl for extra diversity, evade an advanced bad Terminator who is also Latino, I'm sorry, Latinx, which is on a mission to kill her before she grows up to lead the resistance in the future and fight against the machines. Yes, they managed to ruin one of the greatest film franchises in the history of cinema. It bombed, reportedly, losing $100 million, and The Hollywood Reporter said that the studio has no future plans for any other Terminator movies. Get woke, go broke. Ocean's Eleven was a popular heist film that originally starred the Rat Pack in 1960 and was remade in 2001, featuring an ensemble cast led by George Clooney. The reboot, which did very well, was followed up with two sequels, Ocean's 12 and Ocean's 13. But then, in 2018, the gender swap mania infected the franchise, and Ocean's 8 was released, re-envisioning the professional burglars as a group of all women, led by Sandra Bullock. As I'm sure you expected, the film bombed, and the actresses blamed the bad reviews on men, of course, saying that they were due to a lack of diversity among the critics. In 2019, a crime drama called The Kitchen was released as an all-women gangster film, starring Melissa. McCarthy, Hollywood's token fat girl who was also in the feminist Ghostbuster remake, and apparently somebody thought it would be a good idea to do a gender swap of Goodfellas. The Kitchen isn't even a comedy, which made it even more absurd. The title refers to Hell's Kitchen, a neighborhood on the west side of Midtown Manhattan, where the women gangsters live. 
The plot revolves around them collecting protection money from local businesses and running the neighborhood as part of the Irish Mafia. And I'm sure that you wouldn't be surprised, it lost the studio tens of millions of dollars and was a complete failure at the box office. But that won't stop Hollywood from making gender swaps. Disney is producing an all-female version of Pirates of the Caribbean that will star Margot Robbie. Steven Spielberg even said that his iconic character Indiana Jones should take a different form and be played by a woman named Indiana Jones. <laughs> and no, I'm not kidding. Vin Diesel even said that an all-female version of The Fast and Furious is in the works. When the film Dunkirk was released, which depicts the historic Dunkirk evacuation during World War II and Allied soldiers pulled out of the Dunkirk Harbor in France, Liberals were upset that the film didn't gender swap some characters to make it more diverse. <laughs> of course, that wouldn't have been historically accurate or made any sense because women weren't on the battlefield, but that didn't stop the snowflakes from complaining about the soldiers being all men. Also on Disney+, Plus, National Treasure is being rebooted as a series. The films originally starred Nicolas Cage, but the new series is being gender swapped with extra diversity and will star an illegal alien, a young dreamer named Jess Morales. Her and her diverse group of friends will explore the timely issues of identity, community, and patriotism, meaning they're going to complain about white Europeans founding our country, and at the end they'll probably depict the kids as discovering that George Washington was gay. Hollywood's latest plan to promote women empowerment is hijacking popular franchises and then completely changing the major characters and turning good old-fashioned action films into social justice warrior propaganda. Not just swapping male characters for females or adding strong female leads, but by also portraying men as inept, incompetent losers who always need to be rescued from their own stupidity. Everyone knows by now that the last three Star Wars sequels were awful, pure feminist, nausea-inducing idiocy that permanently tainted the franchise. Even the Star Wars spin-off Rogue One starred a woman and a carefully chosen cast of diverse characters. So it's no wonder that George Lucas, who sold the rights to Disney in 2012, later said that he felt betrayed after the entertainment giant decided to go in another direction with his original ideas. He once referred to the films as his kids and said that he regretfully sold them into slavery. Birds of Prey is a spin-off from Suicide Squad, a film based on DC Comics characters focusing on Harley Quinn, played by Margot Robbie, who just broke up with her boyfriend, the Joker, and must survive as a supervillain in Gotham City with no man to protect her. And critics loved the movie because it was about women's emancipation since her character proved that she could be a supervillain on her own without a boyfriend. The film was a failure as usual, but Hollywood can't take a hint. They'll keep making feminist propaganda pieces and have their favorite critics try to sell them to viewers, no matter how much they suck and how poor they perform at the box office. Something that is a big hit, however, is my book, Hollywood Propaganda, How TV, Movies, and Music Shape Our Culture, which you should read, so order it in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores. And of course, there's a link to the paperback listing in the description below. So click it and head on over there and check it out.